We have a wonderful treat tonight in the form of an introduction in how to assess and support your pet with traditional Chinese medicine and acupressure by one of the pioneers of animal acupressure. I'd like to welcome Amy Snow from Tallgrass Animal Acupressure Resources to the Animal Intuitive Show, where we talk about animal communication, natural pet care, and I am a professional animal communicator, which means on this show, we help pet parents and students learn how to help animals with whatever's going on with them. So we help everything from behavioral to emotional to improving their wellness. And I'm also nationally board certified in animal acupressure and massage. So we talk about that as well, which leads me to our guest tonight. So I want to welcome Amy, Smo Amy Snow to the show tonight. Hello. Welcome. Hi there. <laughs> Uh, and also, um, Nancy Zadonis, who also created Tallgrass with Amy. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to make it tonight, but uh, she and Amy have been on the show a few times previously. So I encourage you after this to go binge a little and go to those playlists for interviews or acupressure. It's an either or. And go check out those episodes with Amy and Nancy, and you can learn even more about animal acupressure, traditional Chinese medicine. So, okay, let me move on from that. And okay, tonight, as I mentioned, um, Aunt Amy has prepared a mini class. And we have some people in the chat I just want to say hello to. Hi, Mel Mac. Hi, Diane. Good to see everybody. Looks like you know some people here, uh, Amy. And uh, I think you can probably see the chat. I should have enabled that and I forgot to, but that would probably be confusing. But hi, Carol. <laughs> um, and yes, thank you everyone for coming tonight. We're so happy to have everybody here and you know, have every, everyone who's pet lovers join us in this community. So, um, you know, really, I just wanna kind of give you a chance, Amy, too, just to tell people, you know, a little bit about uh, Tallgrass Animal Acupressure Resources. When did it get started? And, um, you know, what was your, how did this all come about? Well, a brief, brief history is Nancy Zadonis actually founded Tallgrass and about 30, 35 years ago, back when everybody looked at her very quizzically and didn't really um, have any idea what she's talking about. Why would you do that with a horse or a dog or a cat? Why would you try to use your hands at all? Just go to the vet. Um, so times have changed, thank goodness. And over the past, and I, I think, I came along about 25 years ago. Nancy had already written some very good handbooks. So it was starting, the idea that she had was it's, you know, she could be a practitioner, but the real thing they wanted, she wanted was to make sure that it got out to the regular folks who had the animals and could help their own animals. And then we built a base of practitioners and changed, built some of the books to what they are now, but that's been over a 25 year time. And it's been a fascinating, challenging journey for me. And we seem to keep going one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Today we're going to talk about assessment and because the Chinese medicine approach can be used with massage, it can be used with intuition, it can be used with anything, communication, and so it's really a wonderful general introduction to how the Chinese mind thinks. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you know, feel free as we're going along in the chat and I will be checking the chat for questions. So feel free to put those there. If I miss your question and I, I will go back through the chat and uh, see what I have missed. So. Don't worry if you put something there and I'm going along and I don't respond to it. So I will come back to it. Okay. And hi, Tammy. Okay. So appreciate any sort of, uh, oops, I lost my screen. If, we, if this is beneficial to you, we appreciate you giving us a, a thumbs up or, you know, just liking the show, uh, sharing, showing if you like the show by sharing it. And hold on one second, guys. I'm so sorry. My little screen just went somewhere else. Hold on. 
can see all my controls, but I can't see my screen. Hold on. I'll find it. I think it's down here. It's like hidden. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's like, t hold on. I'm, this is the weirdest thing that's happened. This has like never happened before where I literally can't, it just like went, whoop. Okay, I'm sorry guys, be there, hold on. This is funny. Well, I can begin that while you're searching, that would be great. we Thank can you. get started. Yeah, because you guys can't, can you guys uh, see, been... actually the, can you see the keynote right here? Because I can actually. Oh, that's, yes, Okay. I can cause... see it. Okay, I mean that. I, as long as everyone can see it, then I can I can maneuver it like that, even though I can't see it in the widescreen. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. a little small, but it's very readable. And the assessment is key to any acupressure massage hands-on activity, because you want to have. If you're going to take the time to give an animal and have them give you your their time, you want to make sure that is it is as effective as possible and you have to start somewhere so let's the way you do start is understanding what's going on with the animal so go ahead and switch through because we did the presentation already it is i consider this a webinar and since it is so small i do have to put my glasses back on oh, there it is okay in Chinese medicine, we look at the emotional as well as the physical, and frankly, it's equal. The, you know, the skin and bones and ligaments and tendons and is as important as how the animal, the spirit of the animal is functioning. And if they're, you know, angry, <laughs> if they're uh, sad, depressed, animals go through a lot. I mean, you can look at the eyes of an animal and be pretty clear because there's a wonderful Chinese statement that is what's housed in the heart is revealed in the eyes. And revealing it in the eyes means we're seeing the spirit of the animal there. And in Chinese medicine, it's known as the Shen. So we want to arrive at an effective acupressure massage session. And the only way we can do this is really understand the physical condition as well as the emotional. So selecting acupressure points for the session, because acupoints, when we get to it, we're gonna, it's gonna be talked about a little later of how we effectively get to that point of selecting the points to work with, uh, the animal will uh, benefit from it only if we've done a good job of assessing what's going on, because the points themselves have functions and they support the animal's entirety for what we call a harmonious flow of chi. So even during the session, we continue to assess because that's what we want to know is how is it the animal experiencing the actual session. So it's a assessment goes through the whole process. Next. The tool that's used in Chinese medicine is called the four examinations. They didn't have the high tech things that we have now, which are incredibly useful, especially since I am a firm believer in integrative medicine. Uh, you, you're looking at a person who wouldn't be here without it. So it, uh, I don't, it's part of the picture. We use it as part of the picture. And, the four exams relies on keen senses, being able to see, being able to observe, being able to really understand what's going on with the animal. <clears throat> you know, I think we all know that if the animal's eyes are dull and they look like they haven't lived there in their, they've been in a shelter for too long, we, we understand what is going on, that they have been turned off by their lives. And so there are specific acupoints, believe it or not, that help them refresh their spirit. So using your, your senses, you're gonna be observing, smelling, and we're gonna go through the four exams together. 
what the Chinese are most interested in is the functioning within the environment. They're, it's what, how is the animal coping you know, with the food they're eating, with the people they're living with, with the sport they're doing. There are many examples that for horse people, you know, you get going thinking the horse should be a dressage horse. Well, lo and behold, it's a hunter jumper. It's not a dressage horse. So when we started, by the way, we did start with horses. And so a lot of our examples and thoughts go that way. But I love working with dogs and cats. And you're seeing in that picture, actually, my two past animals, that was Oak and Oscar in the picture. So they're looking at how is this animal functioning? And whatever the reason they're doing that is because we can see on the exterior of the dog's or horse's or cat's body so what is going on internally. So it presents externally. So say an example very quickly would be, say there was liver malfunction. Well, we'd look at the sclera of the eyes and we'd see yellow. Well, we then know we need to work with liver and clear toxins, clear whatever's going on. So another example is the dog has the sniffles and the nose is dripping. Well, we know we have to deal with the lung. So that is what it means that what's going on internally can manifest externally. In Chinese medicine, that is known as the law of integrity because the body is one whole. It's not disparate. You don't just have a liver sitting over there because if the liver is not functioning, then the whole body is compromised. So that is what was called the law of integrity. Next. Okay, here is where we start observing. Now that's quite a dog. And what would you say that dog looks like? Is that a healthy dog? Looks pretty healthy to me. What else would you say about that dog? He looks uh, like he has a lot of energy, uh, focus too. Uh, shiny coat or good, good full coat. I guess you can't really totally tell because he's wet, but looks like a good thick full coat. Uh, good, you know, looks like he's got good muscular, muscular, you, you know, his muscles are working good. He's jumping up, strong, healthy. Yep. Those are all the good things of a well-balanced, harmonious flow of chi. That's what you're looking at, is this dog is vital, has a lot of good, healthy vitality. So here's... When you're looking, doing your observations, the next slide will tell you some of the items that we look at with our keen senses. He has joy in his movement. Yes, it's the focus is so beautiful in this animal. I agree. Now here's another little cute face. <laughs> uh, could be a little more tentative, I'd say, when you look at that dog. So we're looking at the general attitude. And by that, we kind of combine general attitude with confirmation. You know, if the dog walks slinking into the room with his head down and not looking up and kind of slow, you know that the general attitude and confirmation at that point, things are not quite right. So then there's skin and coat. That is a big telltale, especially with cats and dogs. Um, if the skin is dry and flaky, from a Chinese medicine point of view, not enough moisture and richness and health and nutrients are getting to the surface of the skin. Uh, with the coat, we all have to be a little careful on that because it also depends on breeds. You know, if you're thinking of a Labrador, you want it to be a nice, softer, smooth coat. If you think of a terrier, you might have a more uh, dry and rugged coat. If you're thinking of, it, you're thinking of a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, for instance, so you do have to consider the breed. If they're mixes, you want to kind of get an idea of what they are. We have a uh, 
Mexican street dog <laughs> named Hugo. And Hugo is a terrier of many mixes. And he has a very rough, dry coat, basically. So you do need to think that through. Muscling, well, how is the muscle tone? What's the conditioning of the animal? Is it athletic or is it a couch potato? And you have to know, you're gonna later on in the next part of it, observation, you need to gain even more information. Discharges, eyes, ears, nose, any discharges. Uh, even from the, um, anywhere on the body, are there any open sores? That would be, or an inflammation or swellings or cold places. So you're looking at this animal very focused. You've got to focus on this individual animal and then do some kind of gait analysis, some sort of walk the animal out, trot the animal back, how balanced does it look? And that's the beginning of taking a real good look at the animal. That's the very beginning of assessment. We often say, when we're teaching, put your arms behind your back, your hands behind your back, and just look. Because you see, you know, the human being sees a lot. We do, we do. And we should use that as a very strong tool. And that's what the four examination is about. It is a tool. Next. Skip to yeah, kind of lag for there, you go. Boom, boom. there we go. Okay. <laughs> the next is sounds and smells. And the sounds, we know what congested breathing sounds like. We know what dry, raspy breathing sounds like. We know when an animal is howling and unhappy and left alone. A little bit of, you know, perhaps one of the questions you do end up asking a, an owner if you're working on them as a practitioner is uh, how do they handle being alone? Um, Mel asks about lipomas. You're gonna see lipomas and we can talk about them. That's, that's good. It's worth talking about when we get done with this because often older animals, which is what we're gonna focus on in the case study, uh, often have lipomas because the metabolism water metabolism in the body and the functioning of the body has slowed up and creates these fatty tissue tumors. And that's what a lipoma is. And that's stagnation in Chinese medicine terms. It's considered a stagnation of body fluids and fats, obviously. Smells, dogs, if you smell a putrid smell, where is it coming from? If it's coming from intestine or is it coming from the mouth? Is it bad teeth? That's worth knowing. Smells and sounds happen to us pretty at much at the same time, you know, and that's why I think they're together in the Chinese medicine thought, listening and smelling. Body odors, again, a Chesapeake Bay Retriever might often have a kind of damp smell because they have an oily coat. And here we have stool and urine. They should smell. If they don't smell, that's not good either. That means that the digestion process is not doing its job. But if it's an extreme smell, that isn't good. So it has to be a balanced smell, so to speak. If it's an extreme smell, and it's, it usually indicates what we call a hot condition, a heat condition. That in other words, it's cooking too hot internally to have a, a very extreme smell. Example, quick example for that would be you go buy your garbage in the winter, yeah, it doesn't smell so bad. You go and buy your garbage in the summer, especially toward garbage day, yes. <laughs> the heat of the summer helps the breakdown and create extreme smells. Okay, next, we're up to number three. This can be challenging history, inquiry, questioning, because we don't always know. A lot of our dogs come from shelters and a lot of our animals, you know, just don't know their backgrounds, but you try to get as much information as possible uh, from 
a person who's either the pet's companion in some shape or form. Uh, so the daily routine, when do they eat? Do they sleep? Do they rest? Do they, what, what's their day like? How many walks do they have? Can they go out and just play vigorously? Or are they contained in a crate a lot of the day? We have a little dachshund who spent 14 hours a day and he is a mess. He was in his crate for 14 hours a day and I don't think the people gave him very much attention until they finally turned him in to the Inhumane Society. They asked us to help him. Um, we picked him up thinking we were fostering. It's six years later because absolutely no one else would have kept him alive. <laughs> He's that little stuff fellow. But we love him. He's a love dog. <laughs> what kind of sport? Uh, is he couch potato? Like a lot of greyhounds. <laughs> which I've had. Is he a coursing dog, a frisbee dog, just a walking dog, a beach buddy? It's important to know how much exercise the animal is getting and how much rest. It's equally as important that you have to rest. What food are they eating? Is it a natural raw food? Is it a parboil because they're older? Is it unfortunately other kinds of food that are available? Those are questions you need to ask. But do remember that any of the dry nugget foods uh, tend to be hot in nature from a Chinese medicine point of view. Veterinary care, any veterinary procedures? Have they been desexed? Has they Do they get medications? Have they had uh, surgeries or ligament issues? Those are all part of the getting, asking questions and knowing more and more about the animal. And last but not least, because Anne's gonna turn it to four. Sorry, my buttons keep sticking. Did that do There you go, okay. that's the one. We look at the physical condition of the dog as a total. And we start with the bladder meridian, just touching it and going down it because it's actually the beginning of the session. And once you touch the animal, you're already beginning the actual physical acupressure massage session. Uh, why you trace this particular one is that it does travel from the inner canthus of the eye all the way down to the pinky toe of the dog or cat. And what you're telling the animal by doing this is that this is not going to be just, hi, I'm petting you, we're having a nice time. You're starting something called intentional touch. In other words, I am, and you do this three times, put two hands on the dog or cat, trace the meridian three times because that communicates that this is not just petting. This is the beginning of something different. The experience, just the physical, the soma, the surface touching changes the body experience. And the only good example I have of that really is we were teaching in Australia horses um, and people called me over and they hadn't gotten to this the number four yet. They were just doing the observation, listening, smelling. And they said, well, smell the horse in the front. And I smelled the horse in the front. It was a nice horsey, grassy smell. There's a sweet grassy smell that horses give off. And then they said, well, smell the animal toward the back. And this was during a really severe drought in Australia, by the way. And the horses were only getting specific buckets of water, very one or two a day. It was dangerously dry. <clears throat> and there were a lot of fires actually in the area. So one quick drink here. Went to the back of the horse, smelt like burnt wood. Really, really strong burnt smell. And so I said, well, go ahead and do the opening. It's called the opening, going the tracing the bladder meridian. I said, go ahead and have to get keep going and they did and then 
came back and said, you've got to smell this horse. They had just done the, the tracing. I smelled the horse. Grassy. Wow. So this is why I know that this is the beginning of the actual session is because just from that somatic touch, light touch even, three times on each side of the animal, that is already balancing, starting the balancing process. And they're also finding out that, well, and it's true, if you touch anywhere, if you touch it even on your own shoulder, your consciousness goes to that spot. Mm. So we all do that. If I put my hand on your shoulder right this minute, guess what? Your consciousness will go to that spot yeah. where I put my hand. 80% of your body awareness will be right there. So that's why we start there. Next slide. So what are you feeling for with, during the physical? This is the beginning of the physical, number four. And it's the actual hands-on, because you started out with a lot of you're just looking. We're very far out. Then you're coming a little closer with listening, smelling. Then you're asking questions, so you're getting a little closer. Well, now your hands on. Wow, now you're into actually trying to figure out what you're physically feeling and doing. But you have begun the process, so don't skip that idea. The general condition, in other words, is the muscle tone healthy? Is there anything specifically going on in a condition, in a location on the body? If there is, is it hot or cold? Very simple idea. Is it hard or soft? We use very technical language in our classes, as you know, like mushy and mushy. <laughs> because there is that. There are dead places that you can feel, especially on an animal that has been injured. Scar tissue, important to know where the scar tissue is. That would be te technically cold, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So looking at, is there too much heat or not enough heat, too little? Is it balanced? How balanced does it feel? And when you're touching all the whole body, you get a sense of what's going on. And that's part of figuring out what the physical condition is. But you're also, when you're doing this, how alert, how is the dog responding or cat? How, what is the response? You're, getting, you're also picking up from what you started with, which is general attitude. Are they curious? Or do they want to get away from you so quickly? Whatever's going on, you, this is where you, it's sort of the uh, rubber meets the road is you figure out what's really going on for the animals. Now you're down to the specific. Okay, so what do you do with all this fantastic information? Because you're looking at the vitality of the animal. How energetic, how focused, how, what is the best, what, and you wanna give this animal the best. And this is called the vital chi is are all the vital substances, blood, oxygen in the blood, <laughs> uh, body fluids, is everything flowing smoothly? Is chi doing the job of moving this through the body? So that we have a nice shiny coat in this case for this dog, keen eyes, full power. <laughs> This is a vital animal, and that's what we're really after. But that's not always true, is it? So let's go on to the next slide. Because what we're looking at is the balance of yin and yang, the fire and yang energy in the body, and the body fluids and body substance balance. How is it all working in a dynamic balance? It has to be very dynamic, it has to go both ways. One takes care of the other. You have to, it's a, uh, one consumes, yang consumes, and then it gets energized by the yin. 
yin it feeds the young. So water is more yin in nature and fire is more young in nature because it's raising lots of energy. But let's move on to the next because what we're looking for is the balance of yin and yang. I like these fun pictures because they look like they're yin and yanging. <laughs> they're doing both. That they're together. There's lots of sweetness there and lots of an energy. So we're looking for the, the goal is to create. Oh, fascinating. Yes, I think so. The goal is to create a balance of yin and yang, which is they're the two aspects of chi. So if yin and yang are balanced, there's a harmonious flow of chi. All the tissues are being nurtured. They're being getting what they need to be healthy. They're getting their balance. They're all the internal organs are functioning properly. So that is the goal that we want to gift to all the animals that we ever come in contact with. How do we do this? What's it all about? Gee whiz, how do we do this? There are energetic pathways or channels throughout the body that are associated, well, there are many of them. It's a whole web. It's not, but there are 12 major ones and two extraordinaries that have acupressure points on them. The chi flows along these pathways and sometimes it gets black, blocked in the meridians. Or there might be a little imbalance in the internal organ that causes another a meridian level blockage. And if it stays there a long time, that compromises the body. That means something has to be done. You have to take care of it. The longer it's there, the worse it gets. And the deeper into the body it goes and affects the internal organs. But if it's, we can catch it. You know, if we see dry skin, I'll use that as an example again. If we see dry skin and we can manage it right away on you know, if you see the flaky or, you know, a rough coat that should be a silky coat. There are ways we can manage it right away on the superficial level. So that, that would be the goal. And that's usually uh, blood, blood circulation. Use it in the lung. Part of the lung's job is to make sure there's enough moisture on the surface of the skin. And there's a point called bladder 17 that its job is to send rich blood throughout the body. So these are the, this is how it works. And, you know, people say, well, you know, these, how do you know that they're there? just the way, you know, when you pick up your telephone and I call you and lo and behold, can you see those energetic pathways? They're the same. They're vibrational pathways that go through the body. They're here and they're on your, and on your phone. So you don't see those either, do you? The idea is that chi flows through these pathways and we can influence them by using acupoints. And all of the meridians are named after the internal organs. And this is a little complex and we're getting a little deeper, but I'm going to have, we'll go on to the association, uh, the points that we're going to talk about. These points along each of the meridians have specific functions. And yes, there's 364 points on the body, but you don't have to learn them all, I promise. Because there are more commonly used points that that's what we teach in our program and our, especially in our uh, online program that you will be introduced to in a minute. But the pools of energy are the acupoints along each of the meridians. So by holding them, you're adding your energy to them while creating a stimulation that influences the flow of chi. And when you say blood as well, because in Chinese medicine, blood isn't only the red stuff. 
it's any nutrient rich fluid in the body. So the body fluids are affected. So you're moving chi along the meridians and getting rid of blockages or stimulating increased energy, higher, more chi in the area. An example that I can think of quickly is if you have scar tissue, then you want to bring, it's cold in nature. You want to bring work above and below it along meridians to bring chi through it, to warm it. And I've gotten rid of a fair amount of scar tissue by doing that and warming it. Basically you're warming it and adding new, nutri well nutriated tissues in that area. Um, the points do have specific, what we call functions, but we also have, call them energetics. Um, and you learn them fairly quickly because there are groupings of them. And they, that's what we teach the groupings of them and how they function in the body. And again, our goal is to restore the balance of yin and yang so that there's a harmonious flow of chi. Next. Decided to use sort of a quick case study before we do some answers, question and answer. And I chose aging because it's real clear, I think, that it's more of a tends to be a yin condition. Things are slower, animals sleep more. There tends to be metabolism issues. One of them we consider water metabolism or body fluid metabolism, lipomas. Uh, digestion can be a little more touchy. Uh, I have a 13 year old beautiful dog and she uh, has frankly lost her eyesight. She's blind. So things do change and that's more yin in nature. What's interesting is she's still running and playing and doing everything, but she, I can tell that her just digestion has slowed down quite a bit. Um, arthritis tends to be with older animals, not to say that there are unfortunately some younger animals who develop arthritis, but judging with that is also pain, which can be acute in nature. But in terms of the aging process, arthritis is aging. <clears throat> Poor, less circulation of blood and body fluids. Weakens the immune system. Usually less muscle tone starts deteriorate, muscle tone deteriorates and you can see the backbone, for instance, a little more clearly. And I'm sure you could add to that list, but let's start there. <laughs> Next. I know you can't read that. It's too small. Oops. Now let's stay back one. <laughs> there you go. So a session plan for that animal, for any aging animal, this is sort of a generalized they have a loss of vitality. That's how we look at it from a Chinese medicine point of view. So how do we help this animal? What do we do? Gee whiz, we want to help this animal. True, we'll never restore this animal to 100%, but we want can manage the animal's issues. So we want to help improve circulation, stimulate digestion, and address arthritis. So on this particular chart, which you can't read, <laughs> it's too small. Uh, and you, oh, if you want to email us or just communicate, uh, just, it would be, um, well, it's just amy at animalacupressure.com. Uh, if you wanted that, if you'd like to get this chart, we're happy to send it out when this is over. But this is the goal and these are points specifically that will help uh, i can read it because i know the chart it says stomach 36. stomach 36 is helps with it's considered the master point for the gi gastrointestinal system so as the gi tract 
stimulating, it's the most important point you could use for digestion. That's why we have uh, stomach 36. Another point sort of in the middle of the, whoops, back. <laughs> On the very, very top, there's governing vessel four. I'm just, I can see them. Yeah, governing vessel four is known as the gate of vitality. By stimulating that specific point, you're bringing up the vital essence of this animal. You're actually restoring some of the vitality. There's another point there, bladder 17 on the top. That has to do with blood and circ blood circulation, nutrient rich blood to feed the tissues, all the tissues, the internal organs, everywhere. So this is basically what it's about. It's, uh, it's good stuff. We wouldn't be doing it for the past 25 years, frankly, if it were not. So we, you know, obviously have been teaching this for a lot of years too. Next, I'm going to finish this and I'll be happy to answer your questions. I can't read that very well. Some of my... I can read it but when, we, when you're ready, let me know. Um... Okay. Um, As tall grass animal acupressure resources, we have charts, we have the meridian charts, we have information about how the body functions. Uh, the circu there's a um, circular, there's a 12 hour, uh, 24 hour clock in which chi flows throughout the body. We give you information about that. And we have three books that are considered the textbooks for our school, for our work for our workshops. Uh, they're absolutely essential if you want to learn acupressure. And then we have, next slide, online, online programs. Right now we have about hmm, 19 different ones, but they're divided between small animal and equine. And people can get started with the online courses and see what they think, see if they like it. If they like it enough, there's going to be eventually some more hands-on courses available. Okay, this is where we are, and I'm, now I'm open to questions. I think we're up here. Um, and I will, I'll just attest to being a student just graduated from tall grass and all of these resources they're re they're really nice full i have all those charts i have the books i have everything and they really do uh help you to dive in and go deep into this and um you know they're really well just you know uh well put together well you know the charts are beautiful and they're big and uh, so definitely check that out. I have a link too in the description where you can get a little bit of an affiliate. I have an affiliate thing where you can get a little discount. So check that out too. And uh, so, yeah, so let's go to, thank you so much, Amy. That was so great. And we do have some questions. Uh, let me bring this back up. Um, thank you so much, Mel Mac. You're the best just for, she's putting all these links in the chat, which will hopefully replay too. Sometimes the chat doesn't replay, but we tried to fix that. Okay, so Cheryl, let's bring that up again. Um, okay, so my two pit bulls, male six years, female one year, both smell like corn chips. They must have something going on internally because they don't have any outward signs of fungus. Do you want to read that one? I'm sorry. I okay. heard it read it quite well. Um, my two pit bulls, a male mm -hmm. who's six, a female who's one, both smell like corn chips. They must have something going on internally because they don't have any outward signs of fungus. Ah. Is it a do you do you would you characterize the smell as a heat, a warm? smell let's see she says uh cheryl did you hopefully you heard that
Yeah, I'm wondering if you're just not seeing it, but maybe it's there. Um, it's. I have a feeling it is there. Um, if it's that dramatic a smell, and it's very corn chippy, it could be candida. It could be a number of things. Um, the question I would also have is, what are you feeding? Uh, you know, that I, I can't tell you. I don't want to say anything positive or negative about the feeding at this point because I can't see the animal. But it could be Canada. It could be a yeast issue, too, because uh, sometimes that can smell like pop, uh, the corn chips, popcorn, that strong popcorn smell. Mm -hmm. Dogs tend to have that smell in their paws alone, but if it's the whole body smell, that's a little too much. That is too much. Uh, any other questions or comments? Anything? Anybody's wondering about the programs that uh, uh, Talbert offers or anything? Any questions about anything that maybe went over? Um, I guess it might be a warm smell. Okay, Cheryl says, I guess it might be a warm smell. I feed them Victor dog food. Um, that is a good food. The If it's dry though, all dry food is hard for them to digest. You need to figure out a way to get more moisture into their bodies. It, it not, not just their drinking on the side. Um, that is one of the issues with any of the pelletized foods is that the um, body metabolism needs a lot of fluid to digest it. If it's not enough, then you're building a heat condition internally. <clears throat> okay. And Carol says, is there any, is there a general grounding massage or touch? The most grounding point in the entire body is called stomach 36. It is what's called the earth, earth point on the body. And it's just on the stifle. Um, if you fall off the patella, just come down off the patella and a little way in the soft area at the top of the uh, fibula, not fibula, the other, picturing it, ah! to the lateral side. Just come off the patella and go to the lateral side, just beneath the joint. It'll be a soft little space, and it's known as stomach 36. That is the most earth, earth point. You can also use what are called the Jing Well points, which are surrounding the nail beds of the dog. That can help with grounding as well. Okay, thank you. And Katie Cat. Is my yeah, in fact, oh. yeah, when I'm teaching Twina, which is acupressure massage, that's the real thing. And it's, it's a little more advanced. People do need to know their meridians and their points. Um, I talk about taking, just rubbing generally around the nail beds. And that balances quite a bit of the entire body, even if you didn't know anything. It's very helpful. Uh, okay, um, thank you. And okay, so Katie Katz says, my foster kitty has some sensory defensiveness at times when petting her back. She can get a little hissy, crabby, she, she has sinus congestion, possible allergies. Oh, you probably start with a general balancing and immune system. Allergies are considered in Chinese medicine to be a breakdown of the immune system. Uh, so you have to strengthen the immune system. Even the, the chart that we had up before would be, could be useful for that dog. Thank you. And if a horse 
has a fever and some runny nose, would it be a lung issue and what points are best? Runny nose is lung, obviously, sinuses. Um, fever, it's a heat. How long has it lasted? I mean, those are things, if it lasts any length of time and it's not just a common cold, the common cold is considered excess. It comes and it goes. You get rid of it within two weeks. And it doesn't cause lasting damage to the body in any shape or form the way, say, pneumonia does. Um, points, you're going to use the source point for lung. Uh, helping cool, you're going to use governing vessel 14 at the base of the neck. And there are a lot of other points that I don't know. And without my seeing, the point, I, I don't want to judge too much because fever can be tricky. Some other infection might be going on. And I don't know that I can talk about that because that really is veterinary world. If there is an infection or any sense of infection, that fever is an inflammation. So my thinking is you're going to have to, if it lasts any length of time, please check with your vet. Yes, and I forgot to say my disclaimer that it is in the description, but um, this show is not intended to take the place of veterinary care. No. Okay. And integrative medicine is the best way to go. There are things we can handle as uh, more natural therapies. But what we're doing in natural therapy, I think that needs to be said or looked at. Um, is we're encouraging the body to heal. That's our job, is to encourage the body to heal. We can't, we're not curing anything. We can't think of it that way. We're not, um, it's not, none of that. It is simply helping the body to heal as naturally as possible and rebalance. That's, that's our goal. If we see, you know, if the animal's bleeding out, don't go to an acupressurist or massage therapist, please, or an animal intuitive. <laughs> right. That doesn't <didn't> to work. <laughs> you need to get to bed. And, it, you know, it's like people would say, well, can you, we're off in the last resort, you know, for, say, a ligament issue. Well, if it's totally detached, uh, you know, that's not going to work. There's, we can help nourish the tissues around it, help remove toxins that are around it, but we're not going to be attached to the tendon most likely because t tendons don't have their own blood supply. So we are working around them and helping with the fascia being well nutrient, receiving its nutrients. But until it's reattached, the animal is going to be in a lot of pain. So that's, that's how I, I look at it. And I want to be as resourceful as possible because that's the name of our business. But you also have to consider the extremes, you know, that not to jeopardize the health of the animal. Okay. Um, okay. And Heather, just a, a comment. She says, I just started AccuDog. And it's so nice to get a sense of Amy's personality. I'm a vet tech and do a lot of laser therapy and some massage. Lovely webinar. Thank you. We'll keep in touch. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. And Tammy asks, are there main points to help a dog with Cushing's disease? She has a lot of irritation under her chin to ears. Thank you. There are. Um, Cushing's disease is, is a tricky one because it has to do with um, the endocrine system, obviously. It's a big deal. And I think you do need to work with a vet who is more naturally oriented. Um, there are specific points that we use to help support the endocrine system. <laughs> It's one, uh, the points that we look to are called the triple heater that affects the endocrine system. Um, and that's a big 
you have to take some classes to understand the function of it is the uh, conductor of the entire orchestra that goes on in the body in all three portions of the body. So that's why it's called triple. And it's a triple heater. It, it regulates <clears throat> all the, basically the systems of the body. It's the, that's the endocrine system. It's body fluids, it's bodies. Uh, the way chi flows, it, can, it relates to everything. So Cushing's is a comp, what we call in Chinese medicine a complex because it involves many different things and it can show up, you know, in horses we see the coat, we see the crusty neck, we see so many different things. I, you know, I, I must admit, I don't know too many dogs with Cushing's hair growth. Um, you can change changes in the way, you know, how much saliva is in the mouth and how much fluids in the eyes. Uh, so I can't give you a blanket answer, but the triple heater is one that we would look to, to work with Cushing's. Uh, and Vera says, what, or ask, what general book would you recommend for general understanding of Chinese medicine? Well, our book gives quite a dose of it. There are many textbooks and there are many schools, uh, but for animals, I would be honest with you to get started. I would look to one of our, depending on which species you're looking at, um, gives you a full heavy duty dose of Chinese medicine. So really that made, what is that book? I'm trying to remember. We had a picture of it. Was that up on the, the mm -hmm. picture? One of the ones that you would say? Yes. Yeah. I Go back. Um, uh, there you go. So AccuDog, with the whole big first part of it, talks about the nature of the dog. It's the first chapter. The next chapter, it's a 210-page book. But we go through quite a bit of Chinese medicine, the whole first section of it, before we get to sort of generalized uh, conditions that we talk about and give you charts for the conditions. And the same with the cat book. Now the cat book's even a little different uh, because cats are <laughs> cats are different. <laughs> I like the cat behind you, by the way. They are different. <laughs> yeah, sweet kitty. Um, <laughs> cats are different in that they tend to only like being handled with, you know, something as, uh, like acupressure and massage if they need it. Um, I, we were visiting a cousin in Israel and we came in and been there and dinner had had dinner and we looked over and there was a cat was on the back of the couch and the cat was 18 years old. And I asked Ilana, my cousin, um, well, what's going on with that cat? Cause she was sitting in the sick cat position, just very, with the eyes half closed, kind of that, not moving. And she said, yeah, she's just getting old. We think she's gonna be passing very soon and she's not uh, doing well. She's not drinking and eating, and she's not keeping herself clean, and she's not being as cat-like as she needed to be. So Nancy thought, hmm, let's see what happens. So she went over to the cat after dinner and did an opening. Cat didn't move. Worked a few points. Because we didn't know exactly what was going on with the cat. But some of the aging points that you have in that chart, governing vessel, blood, body fluid movement, rebuilding. In other words, the, taking the components of chi and essence and moving it again, just helping her move, move her own internal activity. Uh, the cat, after she was done, she went back to help us with the dishes. And the cat wasn't on the back of the couch after we got done with the dishes the cat was walking around came into the kitchen was eating 
She lived to 23. And that was one, one session. So I, you never know. <laughs> and frankly, you never know. Um, just helping them be more vital. That was, that's all it was about. She had, was losing the loss of vitality. It was just going all the way down. So bringing up vitality in an older animal. And you can give them choice. They don't, the body may not be able to respond. And that is very, very true. And then we have a series of hospice points when their body is not able to respond to help them pass. There's a particular point right here. It's called kidney 27. And in another modality, it's known as the uh, all that is, was, and will ever be point. Now, cats have, some cats have a vestigial uh, Manubrium, it's called. I don't know too much language. Anyway, it's a deep spot right in the front on each side of the top of the, where there are no longer any ribs. That's one way to look at it. And they're very deep on dogs and cats. And it was using that point specifically helps the animal know that they can pass if they need to. If they don't need to, it adds vitality. It's the connecting point for all connecting points in the entire body. It's really fascinating. It is the association point for all association points. It connects right here. And if you think about it, it's where the priest puts his hand for the last rites. It's where we often put our hand for the last Shema, the last prayer, because you can feel the vibration of breath there. And that's what that's about. This is where breath is vitality. And if, as we all know, if we're not breathing, we're not vital, it's not working. So the lung, is one of the most important part of the vital functions of the body. So we have a good time teaching this. We recommend people do take their, uh, we have an overview of traditional Chinese medicine is the first online course that everybody should take. Whether they continue or not, it gives you a lot of valuable, it's a hard, it's a tough course, it's a big course. Mm -hmm. Huge, valuable information in that particular course. If you want to go on after that, there's um, acupoint classifications. And the acupoint classifications tell you, for instance, I said stomach 36, gastrointestinal system, teaches you those the groupings of points and how to use them. They're kind of, they're, I consider them the traditional Chinese medicine bag. They're my big tools. I use them because they're commonly used points. They're very powerful. They're the most powerful points, actually. All collected together, and once you learn them, you can use them effectively. So stomach 36 would be one of those. Um, it's, a master, it's called the master points. If you have a hind end issue, say hindquarter problem, bladder 40 is very important. Stimulate that point in the back of the stifle. Helps energize the entire point. One of my favorite points, by the way, is what's called classical points. I use them a lot in my work. And it's called the Ba Hui, B-A-I-H-U-I point, Ba Hui. And anybody who knows dogs, knows how much they love that point. It is right on the sacrum, on the hind corner, on the sacrum, where there are no spinous processes sticking up. None of these spinous processes are going to stick up in other parts of the spine. They're flat. It's sort of a junction where there is, feels like a little baby trampoline. That is the Bahway point. I have dogs that usually dance when I do the Bahway point. So that can be great. That's just a wonderful 
overall happy point for dogs and some cats, not all, but some cats like it too. Kind of see it there. I'm sure trying to see it myself. It is tiny, but I'm trying to show it. Oh, there. That's what you're doing. I see. Yep. Right on the sacrum. Good. And it just feels like a soft space in that area. And it, it's uh, just, a, it's the, we call it the happy, to, happy point for the dogs in particular. I had a Chesapeake once who if I had my arm and I was just reading, watching TV or something, she'd come over and she'd flick my arm up and get her little butt right under it, <laughs> asking me to rub that point. So she, that was my girl, Shana, that was her, her special spot. Wouldn't you say, Amy, that they're so intuitive about what they need? Like, they will, like you're saying, just sort of show you, if you allow them, they'll help you sometimes to find, you know, exactly what they need. Once they're used to acupressure and that your intentions are of healing, you're, you have healing intent toward them, with them, they participate. Uh, you know, sometimes dogs, you know, are amazing. Tilly, my dog, uh, she will start chewing on a specific spot. And I'll look at her and I'll say, oh, okay, that's the spot, huh? And then I use it. And she just will relax, move into it, absorb the energy. Very, yes, the animals know what they need. And Nancy had a horse named Sarah who could reach, believe it or not, to the back heel bulb of her back leg, the back lower portion, all the way to tell us that she wanted kidney one. Wow. Amazing. You also, also see animals, sign, I have, my dachshund sometimes will chew on a point called spleen 21 which is on the chest on one of my other dogs. It is the funniest thing. She's on the she, other dog's spleen, not her, her own. Yeah, just like, like, you know, with his little front teeth going. Wow. <laughs> and that I know that spleen 21 is a point that that dog needed and this dog knew that. <laughs> so cool. Oh, okay. Cheryl says, oh, I never know what that point was, but my six-year-old dog loves when I touch him there. I think. <sighs> About the Bahwe point, maybe? Yeah, the Bahwe point. And it's it's one of the classic points. There are other the classic points are very, very useful. Uh, the other one is the third eye. It's a very nice calming point. Folk it helps the dog cat focus. It's a focusing point. And that could be a really good point. Also, if you go down in front of their noses, not ours. But to, these are classical just for dogs and cats. Uh, if you have an appetite issue, the animal isn't eating. You can stimulate that point, right? Just back of the nose on the little behind the black or white, in whatever case on a cat. Um, just, just off the nose on the center line, on the midline there. Um, that's a very powerful appetite point. And when my cat, one of my cats was getting old and was not eager to eat, I would just rub that point and he ate. Very cool, that's amazing. I would bring this one down <laughs> to show, but. No. <laughs> he does only what she wants, so. <laughs> oh, it's a cat. That's it's a cat. Mama. Yes. <laughs> She's the real host of this show. She's why people come here. <laughs> well, as I said before, cats, when they need it, they go for it. So, oh, I was going to say that in the cat book, um, we have two different, two different uh, way, uh, treatment protocols. I don't, that's not the right word, session protocols. Uh, and because cats, we have a short form and a long form. Because <laughs> a lot of times you're only going to do the short 
part with a cat. But I'm a, one of my experiences with working with a cat was I had, oh, very focused and I was working with a cat and I was very industrious about picking the right points. I had done my evaluation and my assessment. I had lined up my session plan. I had done all these good things. I get to the end, I had done the points and the cat gets up, walks away. And I thought, oh, I'm not gonna finish working with this animal. There's something called the closing. This cat literally went like this, which is the lung meridian, which is the lung meridian on that side. And I had worked on lung because she had a stuffy nose. Went down the pericardium, which is a, has to do with emotional issues very often, and digestive issues, which was her issue. Those are the points I had worked. She did what you're supposed to do at the end of the session, which is called closing, tidying up the energy superficially so that there are no things going out. It helps just balance the animal generally. And closing, this cat closed herself. <laughs> Cats, I think, in my, are the most energetically connected animals. They, they, they know their meridians as well as we would ever learn them. So they can show you. They can teach you acupressure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, thank so you so much. Any other questions? I don't see. If I missed any, I'm so sorry, but I think I got them all. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and also, you do have a YouTube channel on here. I think it may. Mel Mac posted it in here. Um, if you'd like, I can link it in the description. I think it might still be under your former name if her link was, you know, the right link, because I think it had the Institute part in it, because it used to be Institute. Yeah. We're changing our business model. So if you, you so you're not confused, uh, we are Tallgrass Animal Acupressure Resources. And we were Tallgrass Animal Acupressure Institute, but we are not a school any longer in and of itself yet. All our online courses, which you can start taking right away, get you will be able to use for your credits toward national certification. And the national certification is the national board of certification for animal acupressure and massage. Nancy and I did found it, and it is going strong, luckily without us. <laughs> we chime in periodically, uh, but it is it, its own organization and you can get national certification through there. And all of our courses are accredited. They can, you'll be able to use them <clears throat> for your hours. Okay, oh yeah, so it's, it looks like it, the YouTube channel is uh, there and I'll, I'll put it in the description too, so. Um, well, thank you, Amy. As usual, you have gone above and beyond with information, and we are so blessed to have you here. I just really appreciate it, and I can't really even express how wonderful it is to have you. Your wealth of knowledge, to be, you know, and to be able to uh, have gone to your school, and I think everybody would benefit from just checking out what the resources are because they really are wonderful. Like those. Those charts too, they're laminated, they're, they're really nice, weighty um, charts, so thank you, and thank you well, everyone thank you. for being here too. Yeah. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. It was a fun time. I, You know, our main, as a resource, is to share information, and it goes around the world, and the more you whoever hears and gets into it, it's fabulous. It just keeps going for the betterment of all animals. Right, exactly. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. And like I said, if this could benefit somebody that you know, please do share it with them. 
And everybody have a wonderful evening and God bless. Rub my belly. Rub my belly.